Number 11, letter A. Calculate the acceleration of a skier heading down a 10 degree slope, assuming the coefficient of friction for waxed wood on wet snow. All right, so here we have a, a picture here, right? Here's our skier traveling down a slope, so that's important that we know that the velocity uh, is pointing in this direction, right? Uh, the reason why that's important is because remember, friction opposes motion. All right. So now the next thing would be to uh, try to draw a free body diagram and detail all of the forces that are at play here. So let's do that. Here's my coordinate system. What I'm going to do here <clears throat> is I'm going to take this coordinate system and I'm going to move it on over right below him or her. All right. And then I'm going to rotate it so that the x axis of my coordinate is parallel uh, with the slope. All right. So notice. If the angle uh, that the slope makes with the horizontal is 10 degrees, guess how much I have to rotate this by? Also 10 degrees. Okay, shift it down a little bit. And there we go. That looks good to me. All right. So now uh, let's first remember, first and foremost, uh, let's detail the weight of this person. So where's the weight of this person pointing? Remember, it always points directly downward. Okay, so the weight is pointing directly down. I'll label that as W. Now, we just mentioned that I had to rotate the, my plane uh, by 10 degrees, right? That matched the 10 degrees in here. So guess what this angle is too? That angle is also 10 degrees. So I'm gonna label that a little 10, okay? Now that looks good. What are the other components now to the weight vector because it's both in the X and the Y plane? Well, I have a Y component, that's terrible. I have a Y component here. I'll call that uh, negative W uh, sub Y. And then I have an X component, right? And that would look just like this, closing it on up. There's the right triangle, the, the right angle is created in here. Okay, and this component is uh, not negative, it's positive, right? W sub X, because it's pointing in the positive X direction. All right, so uh, we detailed all of that, now remember, uh, the normal force also now, whenever we, uh, whenever we have a weight, right, resting, uh, not, not necessarily at rest, but when, whenever we have a weight on a surface, right, there's also, there's a equal but opposite force produced by that particular surface. So the normal force here, right, points directly up, perpendicular to the surface. So let me draw that here. That's the normal force. Okay, now that normal force, all right, I'll call it F sub N, is equal to right, equal in magnitude but opposite in direction of the y component of the weight, all right? So this vector and this vector are the same magnitude, just opposite in sign, all right? So I'll say that F sub n should equal the positive version or the, uh, the absolute value, okay, of W sub y. All right, so that's good. Now, what are some other forces? So that we, we have some weight forces going on, right? And we detailed the weight fully, talked about X and Y components. We also tied in the normal force, which is the force that the slope is pushing up on the uh, skier here, which is equal but opposite to the Y component of the person of the uh, skier's weight. And then there's also a frictional force, right? Where's that pointing, guys? Remember the general concept, friction always opposes motion. So if the velocity is pointing to the right, right, or in the positive x direction, guess where friction is? Friction's back, all right? So this would be the force of kinetic friction. Why? Because they're talking about calculating the acceleration of the skier heading down the slope, all right? So I'm assuming that it's going to be uh, uh, the friction of motion. All right, so now we got everything we need. Let's start setting it up, okay? So we really need to start figuring out all of our x components since we're trying to figure out the acceleration Right, and remember the acceleration should be pointing down this particular direction, that should make sense. So in order to figure this out, I gotta find the sum of the forces in the x direction. So what are the sum of the forces, or what are the forces in the x direction? Kinetic, uh, force of kinetic friction, and my W sub x. So let's first find W sub x in terms of the weight of the object. So in order to do so, uh, remember our little triangle here, I'm gonna use sine. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Sine of oops, 10 degrees is equal to uh, W sub X, and it's ne uh, no, no, not negative, it's positive. <laughs> it's pointing in the positive X, divided by the hypotenuse, which was W. Just solve this thing for W sub X now, so it becomes W sine 
of 10. Okay, good. Next, what I want to do now is I uh, want to create a formula for the force of kinetic friction. So let's do that. Notice on the right-hand side over here, here is the formula. So let's write that. So the uh, force of kinetic friction should equal the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. All right. So force of uh, kinetic friction should equal the coefficient of kinetic friction. Where are we going to find that? We're going to find that in the table on the upper right-hand side, right? They said for waxed wood on wet snow. So here it is, waxed wood on wet snow, and we're using the kinetic value, so 0.1. All right. So we plug in 0.1. Now multiply that by the normal force. And remember, the normal force is simply, like I said over here, the positive version of W sub Y. So I'm just going to write that in, W sub Y. Okay? Now this could be fine, but the only thing is I really want to get um, my frictional force in terms of the weight of the person, not the pure Y component of the weight. So somehow i got to take the weight, the resultant vector here in this triangle, and get it into my formula. How do I do that? Well, I got to figure out a relationship between the y component and the hypotenuse, aka the adjacent side of this angle, right? And the hypotenuse, oh, sounds like we're going to use cosine, right? So cosine, cosine, <laughs> cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of 10 degrees will be equal to the adjacent, which we said was uh, negative w sub y all over. Uh, the hypotenuse of W. So solve this thing. That's a terrible W. Solve this thing for W sub Y. So remember, it would be negative W cosine of 10. Okay. So now recall that uh, the normal force is equal to basically just the absolute value, right? The positive version of W sub Y. So now all I'm going to do is take this result, but I'm going to make it positive and just plug it on in. Okay. So now I get the force of kinetic friction is equal to 0 0.1 times w cosine of 10. Okay, how does sound good so far, guys? All right, now remember, this is the force of friction. All right, and just remember that the uh, value here is going to be uh, negative, right, because of where it's pointing. So we found the magnitude of it, but just remember, mathematically, we're gonna have to manipulate the sign in a minute, okay? Just always consider directions and signs. It's very important. Otherwise, you get the answer wrong. So let's now take a look at the some of the forces in the some of the forces in the x direction should equal to max. All right. So uh, what are the forces in the x? Well, we already talked about it. it's w sub x, right? It's this x component, and then it's the force of kinetic friction, but that's negative, right? Negative force of kinetic friction. All right. So now that makes sense. So now let's plug that on in. So we have, let's say we have then equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Okay, let's start substituting now our formulas down here on in. Okay, so let's do that. So w sub x was equal to w sine of 10 minus then, right, 0 0.1 times w cosine of 10 is equal to max. All right, so what I find here is that I have a common, the, there's two terms in this uh, equation, and I have a common w, so let's pull that out. w times, now it's sine of 10, right, minus 0 0.1 cosine, cosine of 10. All right, that equals now max. Let's now expand the w, what is w? Remember, w is equal to mg. So now instead of writing W, I'm just going to shift it on over here to the right-hand side. So now it's going to be mg, all right, sine of 10 minus 0 0.1 cosine of 10 is equal to max. And oh, look, what can we do now with the m's? Goodbye. We can cancel them. So now we have a lovely little formula here. All right, so it's g, which is 9.8 times the sine of 10 minus 0 0.1 cosine of 10 a is equal to ax. I don't really like to, I mean, they're suggesting in the end of this problem to kind of like, you know, use another question to be helpful. Yeah, it's helpful in developing the idea, but don't memorize the formulas because it really does depend on the motion and whatnot. And uh, all it takes is one little mess up. But if we break it down to its fundamentals and we're able to work up from there,
the question can change however they want it to change and you're still going to get it right. All right. So uh, all I'm going to do is now calculate. So basically I'm going to do sine of 10 and then subtract 0.1 times cosine of 10. Take that value and then multiply it by 9.8 because that's the value of G. And we get a value of 0 0.73. Yeah, seven four. I'll round it to two sig figs. And that is equal to the acceleration in the x direction. So that is the acceleration, my friends. All right, that is all for letter A. Okay, why don't we do B? So find the angle of the slope down which the skier could coast at a constant velocity. So you have to think about how is constant velocity, how is that connected to forces and accelerations? Well, it's connected by a constant velocity being zero acceleration, right? Constant V is equal to zero A. All right, now that's important because now when I consider my formula of, of the sum of the forces in the X direction is equal to MA X, I know there's no acceleration. So guess what happens to this whole side? Goodbye. All right, so now it becomes simply the sum of the forces in the X direction is equal to zero. Well, what were the forces in the x-direction? They haven't changed. All right, they haven't changed at all. So they're still going to be uh, the w sub x here and the f sub k. The only difference is, though, now we're trying to find for an angle, right? So what I'm going to do here is let me, uh, I'm basically using these two terms again, right? So those are the sums of the forces. So all I'm going to do is w sub x minus f sub k is equal to zero. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my values. The only difference, though, is I don't know what the degree is. That's what I'm looking for. So that's my new unknown in the problem, right? So now, let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. So we have um, W sine of theta now, sine of theta, minus still the same coefficient, 0 0.1, because we didn't change the, the uh, wax wood on wet snow, 0 0.1 times W. All right, times W cosine of theta is equal to zero. All right, so now what can we do here? So uh, why don't we pull out a W, right? Why don't we try to, we got to basically isolate the, uh, the variable on one side. All right, so that's basically what we're looking to do here. So let's pull out a W. All right, very similar to what we did before. So now we have sine, sine of theta minus, oops, minus 0 0.1 cosine of theta is equal to is equal to zero. All right, so I'm running out of a little bit of space here. Ooh, I don't really have a lot of space in the whole thing. So um, we can get rid of the W now though, right? I mean, if you look, right, the W can the W can cancel. All right, so now what this leaves me with is uh, I'm gonna try to squeeze it on the upper. Actually, you know what, hold on. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can just do this. Ah, oh, look at that beauty. All right, so now I got a little more room. Okay, so back to business. So I can cancel the W, right? Because I would essentially divide it, but it'd be zero divided by W, so that goes away. So then I have sine of theta minus 0 0.1 cos of theta is equal to zero. Now I'm gonna, I know my handwriting is a little sloppy, but I'll get it a little neater now. So I'm gonna add this whole term on over to the right-hand side, okay? So when I do that, I get sine, sine of theta is equal to 0 0.1 cosine of theta. All right, now we have, to, uh, we, ha we have to remember one thing here, all right, that I'll put it in the upper left-hand corner. Remember that tan theta, tan theta is equal to sine over cosine. All right, that'll help us solve now because what I'm going to do is I'm gonna divide out now the right side by cosine of theta. And by the way, there might be an easier or faster algebraic way. I'm just trying to take it in the easiest in my mind steps possible. But if you found a faster way to do it, that's wonderful. By all means, do it that way. All right. So this is equal to 0 0.1. Now remember, sine over cosine is tan. So we're almost there. Tan theta is equal to 0 0.1. And finally, lo and behold, all I now need to do is do the inverse, right? So do second tan or inverse tan of 0 0.1. And there it is, 5.7. So 5.71 or so, right? So we get a value of 5.7 degrees. All right, that would be the angle in which the uh, 
weight vector, the W sub X, right, right here, would exactly balance the force of friction, and we would literally have no acceleration. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. Tell everyone, tell everyone about us. Tell everyone, 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 everyone. All right, <laughs> just kidding. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe and I will see you soon. Thank you.